back. We are here at the Women Leaders Project 2015, and I am in Chicago here with Jordan of Jordy Cakes, the absolutely ever so talented cake artist. We are, of course, going to get right into things. So, again, how you achieve success? You date. It's simple. Again, though, not each other. You do decide that what you want is what you'll have simply because you're willing to work for it. A, acquire the knowledge it takes and then take action once you have that knowledge. T, tackle every obstacle. There'll be many. And then E, every day do something. So we'll get started right with D. So make a decision and then be willing to work for it. So now I came today just to do the interview and I was gonna buy just one jar of Jordy jars to take home with me and unfortunately, don't judge me guys, it was so good. I think we kind of ate them all, both of them, but again, no judgment. This is a no judgment zone. So you are extremely talented. So what was the defining moment for you or how did you figure out that cake artistry was what you wanted to go into? Um, when I was in high school, I was a competitive cheerleader for eight years. Um, due to a lot of the bullying that was going on throughout junior high and high school, I decided that I was going to step away from the cheerleading team my senior year, and you know, that's the best year of cheerleading, yeah. like, you know, senior night and all that stuff, but I decided that I was going to quit cheerleading, and at that time, I had nobody to hang out with on the weekends, nothing to do after school, and, you know, it was so different from practice, 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 football season, you know, that's all that stuff that you have to do with cheerleading to doing nothing. Mm. Um, all the while through high school I took foods classes. I wanted to be a chef at okay. first. Um, but we took a two week cake decorating section around the time when I was really taking, making my transition from the cheerleading team and I realized it was something I was really good at. Okay. So instead of being um, super depressed, I started making cakes. So okay. on the weekends my mom was making sure like I was making cakes for every occasion for my family. <laughs> Birthdays, report card pickup, Tooth fell out, we got cakes for everything. But I was just really perfecting my craft with my family members at first. Okay, so your first persons were your family. So oh yeah. Hear that guys? Use your family to help perfect your craft. Yeah. Trust me, they'll thank you later. Right, and if you practice on your family, even if they don't look as good as you think, you know, they'll tell you that it's great. But if I was selling them to other people, then they'd be like, you know, they might discourage you. But your yes. family, they were very encouraging from the now. At 21, your product is in four locations, mm -hmm. not just this one here, but also Chicago O'Hare Airport. I'm not sure if anyone's ever mm -hmm. heard of that, that place that people go to, <laughs> International Airport, um, and then two additional locations. Three additional. Three additional. So it's five, including my store. Oh, wow. So um, there's the Hyatt Regency, which is on Wacker, which is downtown, the heart of downtown um, Chicago, and then a Harold's Chicken, which is a really popular, mm -hmm. you know, place where everybody comes when they're in Chicago. Yes. yes. And um, a Miller Pizza, which is right by White Sox, their stadium. So oh, we get wow. a lot of business from there. Um, but it's a really, it, being able to have my stuff everywhere is to have a lot of people be able to taste because my store is not open every day. It's not a traditional bakery where you just walk in and grab something. It's more specialty mm -hmm. and I want to put a little bit more care into my product and I don't want it to be every everywhere, but I want everybody in the Chicagoland area to be able to, you know, grab something, you know, Sweet. And then you said something when when we first started talking about as I asked you I believe, what was your goal? Mm -hmm. What did you say your, your goal was? Um, when I was actually in high school writing my college application letters, I transformed every question into something about cupcakes. Like everyone, <laughs> they're like, so what do you it was every question we're like we changed it to my cupcake essay. Mm -hmm. And I wanted my cupcakes and you know to be tasted all over the nation. Mm -hmm. And now that they're at O'Hare, it's really happening it's kind of surreal because I didn't really think it was really gonna happen I just yeah. you know it's nice to say yeah. at 17 but it's actually you know it is true I think one of the one of the major things is is when you write down what write you want vision. yeah write the vision it becomes plain in your mind and even without you actually well let me make sure I work mm -hmm. work 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 it came to pass mm -hmm. and that was what 17 to 21 mm -hmm. that's a if you think about it a really short amount of time to have expanded so, so much. much yeah so that is awesome. So starting baking in my mom's house is a huge difference in being here. So yes. at my own shop. So it's really that's incredible, yeah. actually. Congratulations Thank to you. you. So you shared. So
something in the beginning of the interview um, that kind of touched me because I've dealt with bullying also. So what are some of the ways in which you've tackled obstacles or even the ways in which you currently tackle obstacles? Because everyone has them. So how do you deal with many of your obstacles? I'm still actually learning how to deal with them. I'm having, I'm very sensitive. So a lot of the things that people have to say do affect me, mm -hmm. but I'm trying really hard to make them into learning experiences. So mm -hmm. if someone, if I accidentally spell someone's name wrong on a K, now we have a form that you fill out before you leave that says check all spelling you know so it's a, it's it's gonna benefit us in the future so now yeah. we won't have a spelling issue anymore yeah so trying I mean yes it hurts the first time that I messed up your child's name because I don't know how to spell really well you know <laughs> I I'm sorry you know it's, instead of just saying I'm sorry we have made um, changes in our business to make sure this doesn't happen again so just making a learning experience is not trying to not take it too much to heart mm -hmm. but it's You're human. Hard. Right, I'm human and I cry a lot. <laughs> But um, it's just because it's my. This is my baby. Yeah, so. it literally is your baby. Yeah. Technically, your first born. My first born. <laughs> <laughs> understandable. Understandable. What I what I will say is is that's highly intelligent what you're doing. Instead of just saying, "Oh, my bad, I messed up," saying, "You know what? You're right. I may have made a mistake, but now here's how I'm going to fix it for the future so that it doesn't happen again." Right. If that is not one of the best pieces of business advice yeah. <laughs> that anyone could ever garner, that that is mm -hmm. simply because okay, you you're human. Everyone's gonna make a mistake, but if you take the time to make adjustments, changes, then you get better right. and you get better and you keep getting better until you're almost at that you know perfection, perfection. state. Almost, almost. Yes. And it's okay if you never meet it. No one's perfect, but you're always working at it. <clears throat> yes, so always working towards it. Yes. You have grown by leaps and bounds since you began. Not only are you in O'Hare and four other locations, including this one, you've done cakes for Shaka Khan, Dwayne Wade, Steve Harvey, some of everyone common who I absolutely adore. I do. <laughs> um, so now, what is it that you do every single day to continue to evolve and expand your business? Um, I try to stay on top of the cake trends. I don't want to become old. You know what I mean? I, I try to develop my own style so when you see my cake you know that's a Jordy cake. Mm -hmm. I don't want it to look like everybody else's. I try to change things. Even when people try to copy my style or take my whole entire style for themselves I continuously try to you know reinvent myself mm -hmm. um, so that when there is a decision between one bakery or another the people from Dwayne Blades camp will choose me to make their cake. He actually requested me to make cupcakes for his wedding himself and flew me to Miami and my mom and my aunt to do his wedding cupcakes and so mm -hmm. so because I do have my own style and mm -hmm. was able to make the cakes for him it's always a you know you, you network and you mm -hmm. I stay pleasant I want to make sure that I <laughs> mingle with people yes. like mingle with the right people because you never know who you're talking to so every time I talk to anyone I make sure I let them know I would love to make a cake for Beyonce yes so, but, Beyonce you hear us yes, yes please please I, I would love to make you blue like all y'all make y'all a family one okay? <laughs> Portrait, I'll do it all. But I just want to sow that seed. Yes, yes. And I write it down, I'll make it plain. It's written. <laughs> it's written everywhere. So <laughs> yes, I um I just might make sure that I don't uh, I stay on top of the trends because Things change. Yes. You don't want to be, you know, the last to know. Exactly. I want to thank you so much for for extending your time and welcoming us into your place of business. And one of the major things that I found in every interview that we've done thus far for the Women Leaders Project, is everyone has always had a mentor. No one gets to where they are without the help of someone who's come before or someone who's just been down that road before. So, who would you say some of your mentors are? Well, I would say that my mentor has been down this particular road before but um, he's definitely my biggest inspiration. My older brother is an artist. We have very different styles of art. He paints and illustrates and does things like that but he's my biggest critic, my biggest cheerleader. He's very tough on me but it definitely helps me become a better artist and a better person. So he's very encouraging and he's the one that'll call me and say is Beyonce crying right now? Is Beyonce asleep right now? And I'm like no she's not asleep. He's like so you know what I mean? So he's that person that I know that if I need a pep talk, if I'm ready to quit, if I'm ready to, you know, he, he's that person that keeps me going. And because
because he's an artist, he understands where I'm coming from when mm -hmm. I'm trying to have some creative control and customers aren't giving me that. He's like, you know what, you're the artist, you know what's best. Yeah. So he he's just that guy that I know I can go Who to. Gets for, it. Yeah, he understands me, even though he doesn't know how to make a cake. <laughs> But, you know, he tries sometimes. He'll call me like, how do you do? He'll call me through the whole process. But he is that person that I know that I can go to for any advice, for anything. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So now, if you had to, let's say, describe yourself mm -hmm. using six words and six words only, okay. what would they be? Um, one would be pink. Pink. For sure. Um, yes. Obviously. Pink. I would have a pink car and all the whole nine yards. Um, bubbly, mm -hmm. loving, a mom, mm -hmm. a Christian, and very ambitious. I love it. I love it. So now, we're going to have a number of youth watching these videos and seeing your story, where you've come from, where you began, and, and how you've gotten to this point now. So if you could say anything at all to your younger self, what would it be? I would tell my younger self to stop trying so hard to fit in when God clearly intended for you to stand out. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. That actually is one of my favorite things to remind my own self, so mm -hmm. I'm actually glad you said that. Mm -hmm. Because why fit in? Right. Everyone wants to fit in, but if you stand out, then they come to you because you're different. Right. Be different on purpose. Be different on purpose. I love that's a tweetable. <laughs> Be different on purpose and make sure they at you. <laughs> so no, I, like I said, I do want to thank you so much for joining us. And I want to remind every single person to every single day, remind yourself you are possible simply because you are.